Introducing Chi-Chi's new Tex-Mex dinners. Texas size helping with a taste just as big. Like steak El Paso, spicy grilled steak, plus two pepper jack cheese enchiladas. There's chicken too. For a little heat, a lot of flavor. Remember Chi-Chi's new Tex-Mex. Chi-Chi! Chi-Chi's a celebration of food! I've been tracking it for years, but still, I was astonished and amazed. An album in the Chipmunks Christmas album, 90% off? I asked the manager if that was some sort of record. He said, sure, record, cassette, compact disc, whatever I wanted. Wow. Big lots. One day it's this, one day it's that. But every day it's the first place to hunt for a bargain. This week's gift wrap, just 89 cents. And Wilson Golf Balls, just $7.99 a dozen. Men's and big men's parkas, $26.99. This is Pulitzer Broadcasting 32 WLKY Louisville. Now, Liz Everman, Bruce Dunbar, Fred Cowgill with sports, and meteorologist Wayne Hart. This is Channel 32 News. Good evening, everyone. Topping our news tonight, another emotional day at the Carroll County bus crash trial. Larry Mahoney cried again following eyewitness accounts of the accident. John Bowl joins us with a live report from Carrollton. John? Listen, Bruce, the scene we ended with last week was repeated right away this morning. Larry Mahoney broke down again during stirring accounts of the collision and its aftermath. The Thanksgiving break does not lighten Larry Mahoney's look as he reports for day 10 of his murder and drunken driving trial. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you give will be the truth? Witness accounts of the bus crash scene made him cry last week. And it happens again when a truck driver tells the jury what he saw after the crash. Right Thick black smoke, flames coming out just about every window. And just, you know, you could hear a lot of panic. You know, people trying to get out. You know, people just, just sort of piled up in there. You could hear them hollering. I guess I couldn't, I maybe put one foot up on the back of the bus, but just simply couldn't go any farther because of the flames. And Another I-71 motorist that night also testifies he saw the wrong way crash occur behind him and ran back to help. There was just a, a constant barrage of screams, cries for help, and uh, just people crying out uh, constantly. A former school bus driver and his wife saw the collision from the other side of I-71. They dragged more than two dozen screaming children out of a life and death struggle to escape the burning bus. When I got the school bus, they was all packed in the back door, within a foot, foot and a half of the top of the bus. I got a hold of several of them, tried to pull them out, and I couldn't get them out. So I climbed up on the back of the school bus bumpers, and I get a hold of them and pull them out and drop them to the pavement. When he would drop them on the blacktop, some of them couldn't get up, and I was right. And I would pick them up and try to lift them up and get them away, or else just drag them over into the grass to get them out of the road. Survivors of the crash are expected to testify tomorrow in what could prove to be the most emotional part of the trial. Listen, Bruce. Well, John, in view of how hard Mahoney has taken the testimony so far, is there any chance that he will sit out th that part of the trial? His attorney says he believes Larry Mahoney will choose to remain in court and listen to it in person. Back to you. Okay. Thank you, John. A Jefferson County man accused of shooting his son to death was arraigned in Jefferson Circuit Court this morning. Francis Sin pled not guilty to a murder charge. Sin was indicted by the Jefferson County Grand Jury Jefferson, earlier sir. this month. He's accused of shooting his son Marshall to death at the home they shared. A pre-trial conference has been scheduled for Sin for January 12th in Jefferson Circuit Court. A Louisville church advisor suspected in the disappearance of hundreds of thousands of dollars in church money was arraigned today on a second count of fraud. Robert Stack is charged with taking $50,000 from a Louisville man for a real estate deal he couldn't complete. He was previously indicted on a similar charge. Stack was the financial advisor to St. Agnes Catholic Church when parish funds disappeared. An assistant Commonwealth's attorney says he'll decide soon whether to seek an indictment on that matter. Investigators are just now getting a grip on the scope of grave and corpse abuse at Louisville's Eastern and Greenwood cemeteries. 48,000 people are reported to be buried in graves already occupied by other people. Harold Adams is here with more. Harold? Bruce, it is difficult to believe, but it is apparently true. 
Investigators say up to 80% of the graves at the two cemeteries run by Louisville Crematory contain more than one body. They're now turning over gravestones and digging with backhoes to uncover bodies at Eastern Cemetery. Almost every site that's checked shows people buried on top of other people. Archaeologist Phil de Blasi says even graves sold for future use already contain bodies. The grave right behind you, as a matter of fact, was occupied by three individuals. And there are worse cases. In the cases of infants, you can get more than we've got, I think, up to about five or six individuals within the area of a reserved grave. Under current standards, Eastern Cemetery has a capacity of 18,000 graves, but investigators have found that it holds 51,000 bodies. And Greenwood Cemetery, run by the same company, is said to be 15,000 beyond capacity. De Blasi says rows of graves have been crisscrossed into sections of threes by new rows. He described one find. And then by the time we got to the third individual, all we had was the pelvic region. And they had been just cut, and basically a third of the individual had been cut off with a backhoe. The news is understandably upsetting to relatives of those buried here. And if someone is buried under my parents, they will be held to pay. That's all I can say, as far as I'm concerned, anyway. Three executives of the crematory were indicted on a total of 60 charges in July. They're scheduled to go on trial in February. Meanwhile, Liz and Bruce, the uh, cemeteries are not allowed to turn any dirt at all until it's inspected by the archaeologists. A disturbing story. Thank you, Harold. Well, a tractor-trailer accident backed up traffic on I-71 North for more than an hour today. The interstate was blocked when a petroleum express trailer skidded into the median. The driver lost control when he tried to avoid another car. That car was trying not to hit a deer on the highway. The hazmat team was called to the scene when the trailer filled with gasoline began leaking. Police say the trailer was carrying 8,200 gallons of petroleum. They say the deer was not hurt. Two Louisville firefighters were injured this afternoon while trying to put out a house fire in the city's south end. The fire started at 1442 Shingo, and when firefighters arrived just after one, the flames had already spread to the house next door. While inside the second house, the two firefighters were hurt. Of my firefighters were injured advancing hose lines and working on the second floor of 1440 uh, when the fire banked down and some roof uh, or some ceiling rather fell in on them and uh, they were burned their helmets were knocked off and face pieces were knocked off both firefighters were treated and released for first and second degree burns the cause of the fire is still being investigated New Albany City Council will tackle the issue of banning assault weapons tonight, and it's a meeting sure to draw a crowd. Council President Ken Kyleman is hoping for a resolution encouraging Congress to tighten gun control measures. Kyleman works at Standard Reviewer, where Joseph Westbecker killed eight people with an AK-47 assault rifle. He says he's concerned the only side speaking out on the issue tonight will be the NRA. I think the other side needs to be heard, too, and I'm hopefully that that the other side will come out and, and have their say because it's, it's, a, it's a public forum and that's what we're there for to, uh, to, to do what the public wants us to do and we can only be guided by that by what we hear. The hearing gets underway at 7.30 at New Albany City County Building. Electrical workers are deciding at this hour whether to accept the latest contract offer from Louisville Gas and Electric. Some 2,300 workers headed to the voting booths today and tonight to make a decision on the offer. Last week, employees voted down a contract. Employee Dean West says although the union is backing the contract, it still lacks job security. Uh, back to the negotiating table, we hope. We hope. Uh, I know our, willing, our union's willing. Now that, that'll be up to the company. And if it goes yes, what does that mean? Uh, then we work under a new contract for the next three years. The vote should be tallied sometime later this evening. We'll update the story on the late report. The U.S. government is doing everything it can to encourage Japan to import more U.S. goods and spend more money in this country. And in the 80s, Kentucky and southern Indiana have been successful in attracting, attracting Japanese investment. This week, an economic mission is underway in Tokyo aimed at getting more Japanese industries to relocate in this area. Channel 32 Steve Bergen also will be traveling to Tokyo, and tonight he begins a series of reports on Japan. Georgetown's Toyota plant is the most celebrated Japanese investment in the Commonwealth. It employs some 3,000 Kentuckians. 
but there are 56 other Japanese industries which have located across the state and in southern Indiana. Those companies have created nearly 16,000 jobs. Japanese investment is placed at more than $2.5 billion. In the U.S., Kentucky ranks in the top 10 in Japanese investment. But the Japanese have a lot of money to spend. States and cities are in fierce competition. Don Doyle, who heads the Greater Louisville Economic Development Partnership, says Kentucky has scored big in Japanese suppliers to the auto industry. There's a new auto corridor that stretches from Detroit down to Tennessee. Louisville is strategically centered in that auto corridor with very strong interstate transportation accessibility, a very strong workforce. But Doyle says their trip to Japan isn't just king on the auto industry. General Electric's appliance park has more than 100 Japanese suppliers. The idea is to get some of them to relocate in Kentucky, increasing Japanese investment here, and putting more Kentuckians on the job. The highest ranking official on the economic mission is former Kentucky Governor Martha Lane Collins, who has been to Japan ten times. The trip coincides with the Coca-Cola Bowl in Tokyo, featuring the University of Louisville and Syracuse. Local officials are hoping the game will be a plus in Kentucky-Japanese relations. Steve Burton. Oh, love makes you real. It's what you feel that makes it so. Make your own Velveteen Rabbit real. Waiting to be loved in two sizes, only a target. Love makes you Later this week, 21 area people from two churches will leave Staniford Field for Costa Rica. Their mission is to make this holiday season a little brighter for the children of Nicaraguan refugees. Gary Collins has the story. Girls. For several weeks, a pile of toys, clothing, and medication has been building inside Louisville's Evangel Christian Life Center. Reverend Greg Carter of Laconia, Indiana, has been collecting items like squirt guns, toy cars, modeling clay, and bubbles. He will take all of this to Nicaraguan refugee camps in northern Costa Rica. You're almost like you're Jesus to them. I mean, when these kids look at you and you're giving them something, and it, I saw grown men cry last year when we went to this one particular orphanage, and it, 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 it just does something for you that, uh, that, that no experience ever has ever done for me. Carter says to children of this area, toys like these would be mere stocking stuffers. But in Costa Rica, they are treasures. Here's a good example of that, your everyday pack of chewing gum. Carter says last year he ran into several kids who had never even heard of chewing gum. So to them, this was a very big deal. Well, it's the most touching thing you have ever seen. Also making the trip with Carter is Reverend Bob Rogers, who has been in Central America several times. For him, the refugee camps will be a new experience. Rick and I talk with uh, a group from the United Methodist uh, Ladies Group and they were trying to get down and help some of the refugees and from those I've talked with the conditions are just deplorable. To these children it's like uh, kids in our country getting a, a hundred dollar toy because they, they have absolutely nothing. Both ministers say response from the public has been overwhelming and they will make their trip an annual event. Gary Collins, Channel 32 News. Here's a question for you. How much do businesses do to help their employees who are balancing the demands of work and family? A new program designed by the March of Dimes could make a difference for working parents. And our medical reporter, Carolyn C., is here with the tales. Carolyn? Bruce and Liz, this class will be offered free to all Louisville businesses. It's here. Well, uh, we might help you out here, Bruce. Having worked in Oklahoma City, you're used to severe weather. Yes. And we may have a little bit of that in the area later on this evening. Hopefully not, but some strong thunderstorms are on the way after a record, almost record-breaking day as far as the temperatures went. Big dramatic changes, though, on tap for tomorrow. Some 30 to 40 degrees colder. So get the winter coats ready once again. We're going to take you out to, uh, well, let's see, the east end of town. This is uh, the Springs, a new uh, subdivision out near, uh, near the St. Matthews area on a windy, warm, almost summer-like day in Louisville. Our high temperature is 71 degrees. We barely missed the record of 72, which was set back in 1927. Our morning low, a comfortable 50 degrees. That occurred back at 12.30 last night. Two hundredths of an inch of precipitation fell earlier today. Air quality was barely into the moderate range. Sunrise tomorrow morning will occur at 7.37. Sun setting tomorrow afternoon at 5.24. Well, we have a strong cold front off to our west, anchored by a strong low-pressure system near Milwaukee. And out ahead of this front, 
A strong southerly flow of warm, moist air moving up from the Gulf of Mexico. And behind the front, a strong northwesterly flow of cold, dry air. And as that dry air is slamming into this moist air moving up from the Gulf, we're seeing some strong thunderstorms developing. Now, right now, our tornado watch is in effect for southeastern Illinois, most of western and northern Indiana until 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Now, this includes the cities of Evansville, Indianapolis, Lafayette, and Fort Wayne. Right now, we are seeing some strong thunderstorm activity developing up across northwestern Indiana. Latest radar summary is showing strong thunderstorms extending from southern Lake Michigan right along the northern Illinois-Indiana line. And this area should expand southward within the next hour or two. And this is the area we're going to have to watch closely over the next couple of hours. The storms that develop here will be in here later on this evening, and some may be strong, possibly severe. But right now, local radar is not showing any activity in the area. It is all quiet, which means we are on the dry side for at least the next hour or so. Currently at the airport, skies are mostly cloudy. Temperature 69 degrees. The relative humidity 71%. Winds are very strong out of the south at 25 miles per hour. Pressure is on the way down. Now, later on tonight, that cold front comes through, ending the thunderstorm shortly after midnight. Then windy and cold weather for tomorrow with highs only in the upper 30s. Let's check the forecast now. For this evening, thunderstorms will be developing. It looks like the strongest activity will be to the north where there may be some severe weather later on. It will turn windy and colder later tonight, a low of 35 to 40. Tomorrow, a mix of clouds and sun, maybe a sprinkle or flurry, breezy and cold, a high of only 35 to 40. Wednesday, sunshine, some clouds, a high into the middle 30s. And for Thursday, clouds, some sun, warming up somewhere into the mid 40s. At the bus stop tomorrow morning, mainly clear skies, 35 to 40 degrees. But we may see some severe weather later on this evening. Right now, though, no watches or warnings in effect for any part of the viewing area. Good. That's good news. Thank yeah. you, Wayne. And coming up in sports, the UofL basketball team heads home. How did the cards do? And how does UofL football feel about going to Tokyo? Find out next on Channel 32 Sports. Tonight, MacGyver challenges his worst enemy, Crack. We got a full-blown crack problem in this town. I'm gonna give you a free taste. You sold them out for this? MacGyver, then. Are you ready for the football? The NFC's best meet when the New York Giants take on the San Francisco 49ers on ABC's NFL Monday Night Football. Tonight's on 32 WLKY. Stuffing. Mr. Scrooge loves the new stuffing in the five-piece holiday meal deal from Kentucky Fried Chicken. Stuffing. With five pieces of the Colonel's chicken and two buttermilk biscuits, all for only $4.99. Perfect for the two of us. Heavens, it's the Cratchits. Hide the stuffing. We brought the ten-piece holiday meal. With four biscuits and more stuffing. Just $9.99. I like the way you think, Cratchit. Get the five or ten-piece holiday meal deal at Kentucky Fried Chicken. Sometimes, a feeling is uh, all you've got to go on, and sometimes, that's all you need. Well, I feel this way, better than it's ever been before, I know it's you, got me Keep the feeling alive with fine jewelry from Service Merchandise, America's leading jeweler. Some people think that canned dog food is the only way to give their dog good nutrition and real beef. But the fact is, it would take more than 40 pounds of the leading canned dog food to equal the amount of protein in one 20-pound bag of Purina beef complete. It's the dry dog food with so much real beef that real beef is a main ingredient. Purina beef complete brand dog food. The beefed up dry dog food. Cardinals on their way home from Hawaii. Not a bad tournament for them. Not bad at all, Bruce. In fact, welcome uh, to Cardinals basketball. You. You're going to really enjoy the next <laughs> couple of years here. This year, you know, they're going to sneak up on some people. Uh, nothing to be disappointed about. These tournaments are meant to get your feet wet, and boy, they did, and they look great despite one loss. Hello again, everybody. UofL basketball is leaving Hawaii tonight, feeling pretty good about things despite finishing only third in the Maui Classic. That's because the Cardinals are coming off an impressive win early this morning in the consolation game against Villanova. Louisville was in its white tops and led by Jerome Harmon. Wow, he had 21 points, and while this guy's only played two games in his career, the sophomore is playing like a senior. Anyway, LeBradford Smith added 16 as UofL beat Villanova 83-69 for its second win in three tries this season. The only loss, of course, was a just miss against Missouri. Cards next is Saturday against Notre Dame at the Big Four. 
Speaking of Missouri, the Tigers played North Carolina early this morning for the Maui Classic title. Yes, and the Tigers were hula dancing in white and in control as Anthony Peeler was on the move. 80-73, number 11 Missouri over North Carolina for the Maui Classic title. UK basketball opens its season tomorrow night at Rupp against Ohio University. The Wildcats talked about it this afternoon. First game, and without an exhibition game and, and without any, any warm-up game, so to speak, uh, we go right into the fire with Ohio University. Uh, the only thing in our favor is that they're not overpowering size-wise, which is to our advantage. This is probably the only team this season with maybe one or two other opponents that that, that won't be true. So I'd probably be a little nervous at the beginning, but I'm just looking forward to playing tomorrow because of the style that we play. It's you know, fun. It's fun to play. I think it would be fun for the people to watch. By the way, UK has already uh, got a commitment for the recruiting class of 1991-92. Tolesboro, Kentucky star Chris Harrison is a six foot five a junior guard who averages 32, averages 32 points a game. He was second in the state last year. In fact, in the opener this fall, he already had 51 points. He wanted to get all the suspense out of the way early, and of course he did that. Also, Deron Feldhaus will start at uh, power forward in the opener instead of John Pelfrey. That is, of course, is tomorrow night. Where will uh, U of L and IU be when the new uh, college basketball poll comes out tonight? Well. The cards may drop just a little bit. Uh, of course, they were number 12 this uh, past week, but it's really nothing to worry about. They'll be back, of course, and IU figures to stay right around number 14 or so after opening with a win last Saturday, while the new college football poll figures to have a new number one, Colorado. That, of course, after Notre Dame was beaten by Miami on Saturday. U of L football leaves for Japan in the morning in its last game of the year. That is Saturday in the Tokyo Bowl. Uh, that'll be against Syracuse, of course. This game was originally scheduled for Cardinal Stadium earlier in the fall when a win would have given the Cards a Holiday Bowl-worthy 7-4 and four record before the invitations went out. But apparently Louisville has no regrets about it. Obviously, had we uh, left it there and won it, then uh, we would be at 7-4 and four right now, and we would be a lot more mad about not going to a bowl than we are uh, the way we are now. If we had to do it all over again, we would do exactly the same thing. You know how close the race is? With I, uh, you know, he's loved by all of us. The Giants and Phil Simms on Monday Night Football against the 49ers. Go Giants. Okay, <laughs> looking forward to it. Yes, absolutely. Well, up 